David Davis. Uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, plenty to ask you about, so appreciate your time. When you first heard that Theresa May was going to be calling this general election or, or a vote to call a general election, how much of you thought, yes, Prime Minister, this is the right decision, and how much thought, do you know what, this is a ginormous risk? Well, elections are always risks, but my thought was this is the right decision. And the reason is, I mean, principally, my own job. I mean, I've got to uh, support the Prime Minister in negotiating uh, the best outcome for us in the Brexit negotiations. And as it stands, before this election was called, we would have been doing that negotiation in the last year before the general election. It would have been quite possible for the uh, people on the other side of the negotiating table to see that as a pressure point and put, uh, put pressure on us to accept deals perhaps we otherwise might not have with, a, with an immediate election thereafter. This way we've got a couple of years space but also uh, we've got the possibility of getting a strong mandate for the British people in terms of the way we carry out the negotiation and that's what this is about. So from my point of view this is all good. But you're asking the British people to back you after what is a monumental U-turn from there definitely won't be a general election to get yourselves ready it's seven weeks away. Well I think as you said earlier the the Prime Minister thought about this at some length uh, on, her, on her walking holiday in Wales, as, uh, as she says. And the, the decision she had to make was actually a national interest decision. What's the way we can get the best outcome for the, the people? Now, in the last few months, we've been taking the Article 50 legislation through the House, the, the Act of Parliament that allows us to leave. And in that, it's become very apparent that the different political parties on the other side have taken stances which basically are designed either to thwart the will of the people or just to try and trip us up. I mean, they either tie our hands in some way uh, or limit what we can do. So the Scott Nat, Scott, Scottish National Party tries to turn it into, a, uh, into something about uh, independence uh, and uh, will oppose us, uh, even at the first round, even the very first act. But, Mr Davis, uh, that, that and, is, and, that, and, that's and the, the nature of politics, is it? Talk, sorry, that, so that's what happens in democracy. You, you are opposed by those people who are, are not in agreement with you. I mean, th this looks like political opportunism, doesn't it? No, what we're, what we're saying is, I mean, what our opponents say to us is, oh, yeah, of course, we support the people's decision to leave the European Union, just not in that way, just not leaving the single market, just not doing this, not doing that. They're interpreting it in their own way, so we're going to say, OK, let's go back to people and say, this is the way we're going to do it. We've got a whole white paper telling you exactly what we're going to do. Do you support that or not? If you support it, return us with a, with a working majority to deliver it, and that's what we're doing. In every single speech Theresa May has made in the last few weeks, I was looking back at some of them yesterday, she's talked about stability. It's been one of those buzzwords. The reason for turning down uh, a second referendum on Scottish independence was the fact that it would be unstable. And yet here we are throwing that, that so-called stability away with a general election. The reason we're turning down the, the, the uh, Scottish independence referendum is we only had one a couple of years ago. The, the, the argument here is rather different. The first thing to say is in the immediate aftermath, indeed in the run-up to the referendum itself, people were saying, all sorts of experts and most of uh, Westminster were saying, if the people vote to leave, there'll be a downturn in the economy, there'll be job losses, there'll be uh, loss of growth, we'll have to have a budget and put taxes up. All those sorts of things were being said. None of that has proven to be the case. In fact, we've got um, higher growth rates expected by the IMF this year. Uh, we've got the highest employment levels ever in our history, lowest unemployment for over a decade. So we've delivered on the economic stability and the political stability. But the question now is, what's best for the country? What puts her and me and the rest of the government in the best position to get the outcome that's best for the people. That is access to trade with Europe, access to trade with the rest of the world, uh, control of our own borders, control of our own laws, control of our own money. All those things we want to achieve for Britain. But we need to be in a good negotiated position to do it, and this is the way of delivering it. Can I just pick you up on your point there about the Scottish referendum? You said you, you didn't have another one because there was one so close away. We had a general election in 2015, and here we are having another one. But, on, but on, nobody expected in that general election actually for this, for this referendum to go the way it did. And in particular, if you, look at the, if you look at the manifesto, it's quite an interesting exercise. Look at the manifesto. It's all built on the premise that we're still inside the European Union. Uh, much of it sort of is inapplicable if we're not inside it. So there, there are changes which are relevant. That brings me to the other point of, of this. And, and Theresa has been very clear on this. She also sees this as uh, an election to deliver on her vision of Britain. She wants to see a country that delivers for all. She wants 
wants to see more uh, equal opportunity, more social mobility. She wants to see an industrial strategy to, to build up our, uh, our industries. All those things are things which are new with her, and she wants a mandate for that too. And she's right, and I think the British people like it too. It's one of the reasons she's so popular, is the British people like this. We want to give them a chance to express that. If she's so keen to show the British people what her policies are and what sort of Britain she wants, why won't she take part in a TV debate, which seems a very well, good way of putting that point across? It's, it's, it's a little bit above my pay grade, but she takes, she takes part in TV debates every single week with Jeremy Corbyn, and I'm afraid the result is pretty much 10 nil so far. Can I ask you, and many would disagree with you on that point, but what's your message to those thinking this morning, and legitimately, I think, as well? Hold on a minute. What about these allegations about election fraud from the last election just a few years ago? There could still be charges relating to that which come into play in, in May and in June before this election. What are voters to think of that now this general election has been called? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know the details of that. It, it sort of precedes my time. But my understanding is that all the proper declarations were made. But the, the process will go ahead. That process will go ahead. The police will do whatever they need to do. Uh, and the judicial authorities will do what they need to do. Uh, and that will, this won't make any difference to that. And do you think there is an issue? I mean, listen to Theresa May this morning talking on Radio 4, and, and almost exclusively she's been talking about Brexit. Lots of people getting in contact with us this morning here on this programme saying, hold on a minute, this isn't an election where I want to vote just about Brexit. I want to vote about the NHS, the black hole there. I want to vote about education and the shortfall in funding there. I want to vote about social care. Stop feeding me Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. It's a general election. Of course it's a general election, and I think the Prime Minister would agree with you on that, and that uh, on these matters we will debate the, the issue, the fact that we are spending more uh, on the National Health Service now than the Labour Party predicted or, or, or promised in their manifesto at the last election. There are plenty of things where we've got a lot of arguments to make, uh, and we're very, very confident of our arguments on delivering a, good, delivering a good social policy, a good health policy, a good education policy. These things matter enormously to the Prime Minister, they matter to me, they matter to the whole government, and uh, we're very very happy to, uh, to argue our case and rest our case on our performance in those areas. You say it matters. I wonder whether it matters to people like Brenda, who I'm sure you heard of yesterday, uh, from <laughs> Bristol. Yeah. Uh, apathy, how big an issue is that going to be? People who can't bear to think they have to vote again. Well, let me say this. Um, to, I'm afraid it comes back to Brexit, but let me say this. We are going to make the biggest negotiation, complete the biggest negotiation, the most important negotiation, in some ways the most difficult negotiation uh, in our lifetimes. Uh, and it's incredibly important that the people are behind that, that they uh, agree the way it's addressed, that they agree with the way it's approached. We've laid all that out and we need them to give us, a, uh, give us their mandate so we can carry it out for them. It's incredibly important. People maybe don't like uh, taking part in elections. I think in this one they'll see this is an incredibly important decision that they ought to have a say in. Good to talk to you this morning. Thank you very much, David Davis. My pleasure.